our focus for this month of January is fasting and prayer is the ultimate source of power. Fasting and prayer is the ultimate source of power. Fasting and prayer is the ultimate source of power. Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew chapter 17 verse 21, he said, I'll be it, this kind cannot go, but by prayer and fasting. So Jesus Christ laid a strong emphasis there that certain things in life may not happen, may never happen without the spiritual instrumentality of fasting and prayer. That's what he said there. We know this story. As his uh, disciple could not do certain things, they asked the master, how come we cannot do this? He told them, this type of thing cannot happen but without, but by prayer and fasting. So we have a teaching series, Understanding the Power of Fasting and Prayer. We are taking part two today. Understanding the power of fasting and prayer. There is tremendous power in fasting and prayer. Fasting helps our prayer. It helps our prayer. It helps our prayer. Fasting helps our prayer. It is the ultimate source of power. Even Jesus Christ, whom we believe in, Jesus Christ, according to the word of God, could not manifest the plan and purpose of God for his life until he fasted for 40 days. He was recognized and known as the son of the carpenter and as a carpenter himself until the time when he fasted. And when he fasted, the Bible said that he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit into Galilee. Luke chapter 4, verses 14. He returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. So there is, we tap into the power of heaven on the platform of fasting and prayer. There are many, many examples in the Bible. Jehoshaphat, he contacted the power of God for deliverance against three nations that came against them on the earth platform of fasting and prayer. So he declared fasting in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3, the Bible said, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout, throughout Judah. In other words, the entire nation, they fasted. If they had not fasted and seek as a sort the face of the most high God, the nation could have been consumed. They could have been taken over. So when we are not fasting, we are losing. We are losing ground gradually to the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ, none of us will lose ground to the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. I said none of us will lose ground to the devil in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Esther fasted. She contacted favor from the most high God. So there is power in fasting. Come on, tell your neighbor there is power in fasting. There is power in the fasting. There is power in the fasting. So we must not exchange the plan of God for our life this year for a temporary pleasure of food and drink. Food and drink is good for the body, but it only satisfies the body for a, for a little time. In another time, you see, no matter how you eat, after a couple of hours, you feel hungry again. Praise the Lord. Praise mighty Jesus Christ. So we must not sell our future. We must not sell what God has in plan for us this year for a morsel of meat. Just like Esau did. We mentioned that last week. Esau, he, he sold his birthright to his brother because of hunger. He said he's, he said he's hungry and he's going to die. Meanwhile, he's not going to die. He wasn't going to die. He's not going to kill anybody. So we have that responsibility if you are not under any form of medication that you have to observe certain things. There is no reason why you cannot fast and pray. And we parents, we need to teach our children the same. I know they go to school, but they can fast even until about 12 o'clock. I think they normally have their, their lunch about that time as well. So they can skip the breakfast in the morning and go to school and be engaging in prayer even in their mind praise the lord they can do that you see what you teach your children today 
and they learn from it today, they will not depart from it tomorrow. And the thing is, <laughs> the examination of life is not going to tell anyone when it's coming. What we are engaging in now is because some people were responsible for us at some point in life to help us to observe certain things. Okay. The Bible said, teach a child the way we go and when they grow, they will not depart from it. A word is enough for the wise. Praise the Lord. Now, let's look at what fasting is in this service. What is fasting? What is fasting? Fasting is willful refrainment from food and drinks for a specific period while engaging in prayer to seek the face of God in pursuit of spiritual empowerment over a matter. I'll take that, take that again. Fasting is willful refrainment from food and drinks for a specific period whilst engaging in prayer to seek the face of God in pursuit of spiritual empowerment over any matter of concern. Esther chapter 4 verse 16, the Bible said, Esther speaking, Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. And neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my, my maidens will fast likewise and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Praise the Lord. Now, she declared a fast between herself and her people to fast for her. To fast for who? To fast for Esther. Praise the Lord. To fast corporately for Esther over what she wants to go and discuss with the king now according to the law of the land she is not supposed to go uninvited nobody is supposed to approach the king uninvited the penalty is death so that's why she said if i pray the bible said according which is not according to the law in other words which is against the law which is against the law and guys I'm taking a big risk. If I die, I die. It's a big risk. But if I die, I die. Then they fasted three days. And went into the king. The king said, the Bible said, the king stretched forth his golden scepter, which is the authority of the office. And whenever that is done, the Death penalty is overturned at that point. Favor of God. What if the king refused to stretch out the scepter? That means death will be staring her in the face. Now, what are we saying here? They, they contacted the favor of the Most High God on the altar of fasting and prayer. They fasted and they contacted the favor of the Most High God. So, it is refraining ourselves. They did not eat for three days. They didn't eat. They didn't drink. They did not eat. They did not drink. He said, fast for me and neither eat nor drink. Three days. They were very specific. Three days. They declared the three days and they fasted for a purpose. And God responded from heaven. They contacted the favor of God. To turn the situation around for them. So this is what fasting can do. For us. No wonder Jesus Christ said. Some certain things cannot happen. But without prayer and fasting. Now why do we fast? Number one reason why we fast. <clears throat> it is. Because it is a spiritual prescription. If we want to live. A triumphant life. As Christians. As children of God, if we want to live a triumphant life, then fasting is a must. Fasting is a spiritual prescription for a triumphant 
Christian living as described by Jesus Christ in that book of Matthew chapter 17 verse 21. How be it this kind, this kind, whatsoever that is this kind in your life in this season, in the name of Jesus Christ, the King of glory, as you engage in this fasting and prayer, I see those kind being turned around for your favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said those kind shall be turned around for your favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fasting is spiritually designed to rescue us from forces that are stronger than us. It is designed, spiritually designed, to rescue us from forces that are stronger than us. There are many forces around us. There are many forces around us that does not want the plan of God to come to fruition in our life. That's why the Bible said there is a great and effectual door before us, but there are many adversaries. There are those adversaries, they are unseen adversaries. They are unseen adversaries. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities and rulers of darkness of this world. But in the name of Jesus Christ, you will tap into the power of heaven in this season and every of this kind in your life and in my life, they shall be overturned for your favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Why do we fast? Number two, quickly, to gain higher command over overwhelming issues of life. To gain higher command over overwhelming issues of life. Mm. We fast against anything that can jeopardize the agenda of God for our life. Over overwhelming. Do you have any issue that is overwhelming before you? <laughs> this is the time to address it. This is the time to address it on the altar of prayer as you are fasting. Your fasting helps your prayer. It empowers your prayer. It empowers of prayer. We said that Jesus Christ's mission was without expression until fasting came in. He fasted. And the Bible said that his fame spread all through. His fame spread all through. So we fast so that we can overcome certain issues of life that may feel overwhelming. There are all sorts of things in life. <laughs> oh my days. God will give us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. People of God, we have, we have a lot of work to do, especially us parents. We have a lot of work to do in this environment on our children. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. A whole lot. We have to put them in the way of the Lord for what is ahead of them in future. Praise mighty Jesus. Mm. Let's look at right approach to fasting. Number one, right approach to fasting is we must be intentional with kingdom matters. As we are fasting, the right way to approach fasting is we have to be intentional about the things of the kingdom in our fast. It must not just be us, me, myself and I. The kingdom first. That's why the Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, he said we must seek first the kingdom of God. Mat Matthew 6, 31 to 33, he said, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What we shall eat, what we shall drink, wherewith shall we be clothed? For all these things, the Gentiles seek after them. For your heavenly Father knoweth what he need of this, knoweth that you have the need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. So when we are fasting, let the things of the kingdom of God be the priority in our heart. Praying, ministering to the people, ministering to the needy, the less privileged. We go back to the book of. Isaiah chapter 58 from verse 8, he said, Is this type of the fasting that I've, that I've prescribed for you? Is it not to, you know, to set the oppressed, the oppressed free, to break the bonds of wickedness and all that? Praise the Lord. So 
we must seek first, seek first the kingdom of God, even as you are fasting, as we are doing corporate fasting or even individual fasting. The things of God must be the priority. Pray concerning the kingdom of God. Pray concerning the land that you find yourself in. Praise the Lord. Pray over so many things. Pray, intercede for people around you that you know. Number two, when you are fasting, fast with a grateful heart. Let your heart be full of gratitude. Give thanks to God, even for the grace that he has given unto you to fast. Not many have that privilege. Not many people can fast. Praise the Lord. So, approach God with a heart of gratitude. Psalm 100 verse 4 said, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and it is caught with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So we fast with a grateful heart to God. Matthew 6, 9 to 10. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So the things of the kingdom first, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the heart. We are grateful on the altar of fasting and prayer. Number three is we must be bold. Right approach to fasting. We must be bold on the altar of prayer. We must be bold on the altar of prayer. When we are boldness deficit on the altar of prayer, we may be signs and wonder denied. Why? Because the Bible said so. He said, let us therefore come boldly. Not fidgeting. Not doubting. But come boldly. Come how? Come how? Come how? Come boldly unto the throne of grace. And what do we do on the throne of grace? We obtain mercy. And we find grace to help. But the key word there is that come boldly. Have a heart like lion, like we said last week. That this prayer point that I'm praying before the Father, there is no devil that can stop my prayer from, from being answered by God. That is the mentality. This prayer point that I'm praying, no devil can stop my prayer from being answered. If you look at the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verses 19 to 20, see, there is something very spiritual with boldness. There is no man on earth that can take what belongs to them without boldness. It takes boldness to step into the realm of the blessings of God for our life. It takes boldness. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 19 to 20 said, And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly. To do what? To make known the mystery. To make known. It's a prayer I was praying. That I may open my mouth boldly. To make known. To make known. To make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in bonds. That therein I may speak boldly. As I ought to speak. That I may speak boldly. As I ought to speak. There is no. There is nothing in life. That is of value. That is there is nothing in life. That is of great. That. You will not need. A bold heart to take nothing it take boldness it take boldness it take boldness boldness of the heart boldness of the heart it take boldness to be able to take certain steps in life there are some steps you want to take in life that the devil will be suggesting some things to you that no it's not for you no, no, you can't do it. It's not for you. But once you take that bold step, you see it that it becomes a walkover. 
So we need boldness on the altar of prayer. We need boldness on the altar of prayer. There is nothing we want to do in life. You need boldness. We need boldness. Boldness on the altar of prayer. So we must be bold. As we are praying, we are as we are fasting, we are praying. Let's do it with boldness of the heart, not beggarly. But do it boldly. Because it's your right in God. As long as it's your right in God, go to him with boldness. Number, number four. Pray and fast in faith. Only a faith-filled prayer is guaranteed for an answer before the Lord. Matthew chapter 21, 21 to 22. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do these things which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be removed, be cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye ask, ye shall ask in prayer, believing, believing. That's the key. Ye shall receive. Believing, ye shall receive. Once we doubt, the answer, it goes, and probably we come back again until when that faith is there. It is the faith. Faith is the magnet that magnetizes our answer on the altar of prayer. Faith is the spiritual magnet that magnetizes our answer. The answer is, is floating, is going around as we are praying. It is our faith that comes alive that takes those answers on the altar of prayer. So we must pray in faith, in faith, in faith, in faith. Matthew 17, 20 to 21. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye shall have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it? This kind goeth not, but by prayer and fasting. Faith, prayer, and fasting. It will take you to your destination in the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, every one of us will get to our destination. No one shall be missing in the name of Jesus Christ. Number five, do not make a show of your fast. Even though we are fasting corporately, now, in this room, in this family, we all know what we are doing. We are fasting corporately, so every one of us, we know that we are fasting. But those that are without, we don't have to be announcing to people, I'm fasting, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. It doesn't, it doesn't attract the right reward. You are fasting, it is between you and your God. Keep it to yourself. Don't make announcement and don't look, don't look mournful or sorrowful that people begin to ask you, ah, what's wrong, what's wrong? And it's because I'm fasting. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. Matthew 6, 6, 16 to 18. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of, of, a, sound count, of a sound countenance. So, it's the hypocrites be cheerful and carry on with your, your normal day. Praise the Lord. Be cheerful and just carry on with life. For they disfigure their faces. <laughs> My God. Bible is sweet. They disfigure their faces. They carry the, the, the head. The eyes will be, on, will be on the head. Praise the Lord. They, they carry. <laughs> they disfigure their faces. That they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you. They have their reward. But thou, now Jesus is speaking to his children now. But you, when you fast, anoint your head. In other words, shower, have your bath, rub cream on your head. Put lip gloss, put on perfume. 
wear better clothes and be jovial, laugh, be happy, be enthusiastic. That anoint thine head and wash thy face. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto your father which is in secret. And thy father that seeth thee in secret shall reward thee what? In other words, what you have done secretly with your father, the reward will come for the people to know that you have been somewhere before then. Praise the Lord. Praise mighty Jesus. The result will show what you do in the secret. God announces the result to the people. Praise the Lord. Now, let's look at effective way, effective way, effective way quickly. Effective way to fast. Effective way to fast. What can make our fasting to be very effective? Reach out to the poor. Isaiah 58, 58 verse 7a. It, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring poor that are cast out into thy house when thou seest the naked that thou cover him that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh reach out to the poor when you give to the poor the bible said you have lent unto god proverb 19 17 either that had pity upon the poor lend it unto god and that which he had given will be paid back to him i'm not going to dwell much on that because i mentioned that last week as well now what let's look at the benefit of reaching out to the poor the benefit of reaching out to the poor number one benefit of reaching out to the poor in fact i have seven benefits here and that is taken from the book of Psalm 41, verses 1 to 3. Let me read that Psalm quickly first. Psalm 41, 1 to 3. Blessed is the he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him from the time. Uh, the Lord will de deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will do, will do what? He will deliver him in time of trouble. So, number one, you should write there is deliverance from trouble. Deliverance from trouble, number one. Number two, the Lord will preserve him. So number two is preservation of life. And keep him alive. That is protection from untimely death. That is number three. Four. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. That is divine blessings of God. Number four. Divine blessings. And thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemy. That is divine security. Defense from enemy. Divine security slash defense from enemy. That is number five. In verse three, he said, The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. In other words, divine strength and help during sickness. And lastly, number seven, Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. Number seven, quick recovery from sickness if he or she ever sick at all. Look at that blessings in reaching out to the poor ah, spiritual things honestly god, let god give us understanding if god gives us understanding because it takes understanding number one now what we have done now is we have received we have received information okay which is knowledge praise the lord We've gotten knowledge this morning, haven't we? But now we need to understand that knowledge. When we understand not that, that, that knowledge, it will now move to the next level, which is wisdom. We will apply it. Reaching out to the poor. That's the blessings. That's the benefit. Seven good benefits of reaching out to the poor. Deliverance from trouble. Preservation of life, protection from untimely death, divine blessings, divine security and defense from enemy, divine strength and help during sickness, quick recovery from sickness. When you are, when you are sold out to giving to the poor, look at the life of Job. He was blessed. The devil tempted, tempted him. He was blessed because he was a blessing to, to many people around him. To many people around him. So, one of the most effective way for us to fast is to reach out to the poor. To reach out to the poor. To reach out to the poor. 
before we started fasting. With the house, we ransacked the house, every clothes. Bring them out, take them to charity. They were thank in fact, the place they were thanking because it's going to bless some people. Some of them are new that has not even been used, and some have been used. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus Christ. The best we can do within our don't wait until I don't have, I don't have there is if we look in, if we look in worldly, you will be shocked that there are some things that you can pass out to some people or you can pass on to some people. Praise the Lord. Everything is not money. It's not money. Praise the Lord. It's not everything that is, you know, liquid cash until we have it that we do certain things. So let's reach out to the poor in this season. It's very important. According to that, Isaiah chapter 58, is this not the fast that I've chosen unto you? Praise the Lord. Let's look at benefit of fasting and then we'll close. And then we we'll go into our set of prayer. Benefit of fasting number one, divine protection. Benefit of fasting, divine protection. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8. Isaiah 58 verse 8 says, I read, the good news Bible said, then my favor shall shine upon you like the morning sun and your wounds will be quickly healed. I will always be with you to save you. My presence will protect you on every side. King James Version said, then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Thine health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee divine protection and this is what job enjoyed he enjoyed the divine protection of the most high god and we all need the protection of the most high god we all need it benefits of fasting but one is divine protection if we read that book of isaiah chapter 58 verse 8 downward it's talking about the fasting and the result after you have fasted in an appropriate way if you look at that scripture the focus was likely on the poor and the oppressed that when you fast you need to minister to them in this way and in this way praise the lord number last which is the second benefit is divine presence of god benefit of fasting divine presence of god then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thine hell shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go. The glory of the Lord shall be your reward. The glory of the Lord shall be your reward. Divine presence. Divine presence. And divine presence, we all need the presence of the Most High God. We need it. David said in Psalms 51 verse 11, he said, Cast me not away from your presence. Cast me not away. There is a song. We sang, they sang about that. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And renew thy spirit within me. Cast me not away. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. The presence of the Most High God is what makes the most of our life. His presence, there is joy in the presence of the Most High God. There is joy, there is satisfaction in the presence of the Most High God. Psalm 16 verse 11, that will show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy and thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. There are pleasures for what? There are pleasures, there are pleasures for what? Forevermore. The presence of the Most High God. So we enjoy divine presence in fasting because your flesh is subdued and your spirit takes over to relate with God. So you enjoy the presence of God. And the Bible said, our spirit is the candle of the Lord that searches the inward part of the belly. So when the time of fasting is the time that we enjoy the presence of God the most. That is 
when we set time aside in the word of God and in prayer, in fellowship with God, we enjoy the presence of God more. And in the presence of God, when you carry the presence of God, God will deal with your enemies when you carry his presence. Psalm 9 verse 3, when my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. They shall perish at thy presence. They shall fall at thy presence. Psalm 9 verse 3. God molests your enemy when you carry the presence. When you carry the presence of God, can anything stand against the presence of God? Nothing can stand against the presence of God. The Bible said, the sea saw the presence of God and fled. Jordan was driven back. What is the, how was the problem with you guys? That you skip like lamb, you use little say, ah, tremble at the presence of the Most High God. When we carry the presence of God, things work well for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we will not lose His presence in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not grieve the Spirit of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So what we enjoy this season, part of what we enjoy this season is the presence, His presence. His presence. His presence will never depart from you. His presence will never depart from me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Have you been blessed this morning? Rise up if you have been blessed this morning. He has taught you. He has taught me this morning. But now what we need to do is to apply what he has taught us. Whatever you have learned at his feet this morning, the wisdom now is to go and sit down and work on what we have written so that we can understand it. We have gotten information, but we need to move that information to the next phase. And the next phase of any information gathering is to understand that information before we can make the most of it. And that's the essence of us writing notes in church so that when we go back, we can go and look at it and even listen to the message again and let the Spirit of God speak to us even beyond what we have learned in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord God will do us good in the mighty name of Jesus.